In this video, we're building a heat map calendar where each day gets a different background color based on how many tasks were logged. Think of it like GitHub's contribution graph, but tailored to your own activity. We've already covered the basics of Swift UI layout, scroll views, lazy grids, and calendar logic in previous tutorials. So here, we'll keep it focused. We'll walk through the data model, color logic, and interaction step by step, but without repeating stuff you already know. If you haven't seen those earlier parts, I'll link them below so you can catch up. But if you're ready, let's dive straight in. All right, this function just helps us turn a date string like this into a real date object Swift can use. We use a date formatter with the format year, month, day, because that's how we write all our task dates. The time zone is set to current, so the result makes sense locally. And if the string is wrong for some reason, it just gives back today's date to avoid crashing. We'll use this a lot in our task list, so we keep it at the top. This is the raw data we'll use to build the heat map. Every time a task was done, we add that day here. If there were five tasks on one day, that same date shows up five times. Later on, we'll group these dates together to count how many tasks happened on each day, and that's what will control the background color in the heat map. That's it. Just a simple list of task activity. The displayed month keeps track of which month we're currently showing in the heat map. We set it to the current month by default. So if it's June, that's what the user sees first. Then select a date is just for interaction. When the user taps on a day, we save that date here so we can show the popover with task info. It's simple state, but it's what makes the view dynamic and interactive. Show day numbers is exactly what it sounds like. It controls whether we show the number inside each cell. Right now it's set to true, so numbers will always be visible. Show extra days decides if we want to include days from the previous or next month to fill out the full calendar grid. For now it's off, so we'll only show the actual days inside each month. And calendar is just a shortcut, makes date calculations easier without repeating calendar.current all over the place. That's it for setup. This turns our task dates list into a dictionary where each day maps the number of tasks logged on that day. So for example, if May 5th shows up four times in task dates, this will give us May 5 have four tasks. We also make sure we normalize the time using calendar.start of day. That way, even if a task happened at 8 a.m. or 10 p.m., it still counts as the same day. This is what powers the heat map colors later. The more tasks, the deeper the green. This gives us 12 date objects, one for each month of the year we're currently viewing. So if displayed month is in 2025, this will create dates for January 2025, February 2025, all the way to December. That's what we loop over when showing the heat map horizontally, month by month. It's clean, simple, and makes the scroll dynamic. Next up is this helper to format month names. Just takes a date like 2025-07-01 and returns the string July. We use it to show the title at the top of each month's heat map. Nothing fancy, just clean labels for the user. Next up is this helper to format month names. So here's what this does. It generates a list of all the days in a given month. If show extra days is false, like we have now, we only include the actual days in that month, nothing before or after. But if we set it to true, it extends the list to cover the full calendar grid, including trailing days from the previous or next month. That way, each month fills out complete weeks, just like in most calendar apps. The loop uses stride to go one day at a time, 864-00 seconds, and creates clean, normalized dates with start of day. This is what builds the full calendar layout. Now we map task count to color. This decides what background color each day gets based on how many tasks were logged. The more tasks, the darker the green. If there's no activity, the day gets a light gray. This is what creates the actual heat map. Effect, you're not just looking at numbers, you're seeing where the busy days are. All right, so now we're in the main body of the view. And if you follow the earlier parts of this series, you've already seen how we build things like scroll views, horizontal stacks, lazy grids, and all that layout stuff. So I'm not going to re-explain all of it again here. But just so you're not lost, we're looping over each month, creating a calendar grid of days, and for each day, we show its number and color based on how many tasks were logged. If you tap a day, you get a popover showing exactly how many tasks happen on that date. That's the core idea. And if you're wondering how the horizontal paging works, how scroll view reader scrolls to the current month, or how the layout adapts, I've already explained all of that in the scroll and layout tutorial. I'll link that below.